Hey, morning guys, it's Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. So today I'm gonna to talk about encryption and radio, and yes, I know it's frowned upon, but I'm also a realist and I have a way of doing it legally. So my ultimate goal is to basically use some of the tools I've been putting together, specifically on the Android plus my radio side with uh, the DigiRig Lite, and being able to, if I ever need to, securely tr transit that in my area and I can do that with encryption with my FCC business license. I can't do that with my amateur radio license. And before I could jump to that final state, I had to do a couple of experiments. So for the last week or so, I've been experimenting with uh, doing public and private key cryptography, uh, basically using uh, a couple of applications, which I'll talk about at some point on Android, but then also uh, and distributing my public key to my network and testing that over the internet and normal email. It all checks out. So I know that works, that the public-private key crypto system is the way that I want to go. Now the question is, how do we do that over radio? And there is a mode in WinLink called P2P or Peer-to-Peer, -peer, where your messages do not go out to the public internet, to the WinLink CMS servers, or through any RMS servers. And I plan to run that on my business frequency completely legal. So that's the whole flow. So let me show you how um, P2P works on uh, Woad, for example. So I've got two different stations here. Uh, the first one is the station we've been looking at for a while, which has uh, basically Android with the WinLink on Android application. And then we're running the DigiRig Lite link up in the bio, guys. Um, I wish I had a second one. The second one that I ordered won't be here till August, so I'm waiting like everybody else. And then I've got the HT. So if I had a second unit, we'd basically have the same setup, but I don't. So I'm using basically my 818 uh, man pack here connected to Linux with another WinLink client. This one's called Pat. So what we need to do is number one, we need to create a session for peer to peer. And it's pretty simple. We'll do packet. The type will be a uh, listener. And then in the global settings, uh, no more I don't have the set, but I set the, uh, oops, SSID to number seven. I gave it a very specific station identifier. So this is listening and it's gonna be waiting for uh, basically request to KT7RUN-7. So we're gonna go back to session here. And again, I'm not doing the encryption now. I'm probably gonna talk about that on the buy me a coffee side. So we're listening, and then what we want to do is go over to our logs here. So this is simplex communication, basically radio to radio. And then over here, I have crafted a message to KT7RUN-7, this station here. And I've got a subject of P to P3 with a payload of test three. And for this test, I actually don't even have to use the P to P only. So for this to work, you have to make sure that one of the stations is in listening mode. And this is where your SOPs come into play. Um, I'm actually going to probably say, hey, if you're running as the uh, fixed operating location, you probably should be the device that's in the listening mode and then allow your field stations to uh, be the ones that contact you. So we're going to post this to my outbox and we're going to go action connect. And the important piece here is that I have it set for the target to the call sign of this guy, which is the SSID of dash seven. And let's go connect. Oh, there we go. Now we're going. There we go. So we're connected now. So this guy is transmitting and he is sending his message. And you can see we're, we're sending that off right now. So it takes a little bit of time, but the reason why I like this approach is that the payload for these emails um, will basically be bit for bit copy when it arrives. So I am able to then layer on the encryption. So now if I go to my inbox, I've got a message there and it's the one that we did, which was P to P3. So the next logical step for all of this then is to use something like these applications I'll talk about shortly, which are Open Keychain and K9 Mail. Uh, these work with the internet, but we're specifically gonna be using Open Keychain and then also uh, how to set up the public keys. So I'm gonna do all of this on Buy Me A Coffee. Uh, just because I don't know what YouTube will do with this content. Again, for my personal case, when I layer on the encrypted payload, I'm going to use my business frequencies. 
And I'm talking to you, Mr. Hamster. Um, I'm just taking what's available out there and providing uh, capabilities that I would like to have for secure end-to-end -end, trust no one encryption. And then on that note, guys, I know people love Signal and Telegram. It's not beyond any three-letter agency to basically sponsor those people to build these systems. If I don't generate my own keys and I don't control my encryption, I'm not going to use it, period. But being able to manage my own uh, secure keys is how I want to operate. And then it's really on me to securely distribute my public keys to my network. Uh, in fact, we're testing all of that now, but over public internet with normal email. So we're even using insecure email services, but encrypting the payload. So we're good to go there. Anyways, like I said, I don't know how comfortable I feel about talking about this more on Instagram or YouTube, but I'm probably going to be talking about this more on the Buy Me A Coffee side, and that's the best way to uh, support what I do. All right. Cheers, all. Uh, happy Saturday, I think.